one of the pleasures of poking around the back roads of upcountry New England, the unexpected appearance of a magnificent barn. And again, this barn voyage has steered us in some unlikely directions. See, not all old barns are tucked away in back roads and country lanes. This one right here is right alongside, busy as could be, Route 1, which in fact may be the only reason it has survived. We're a registered st structure with the Park Service. How often do you go in a furniture store and it's registered on the National Registry? Hubbington's furniture would never have moved into the old Drake Farm barn in Northampton, New Hampshire, were it not for a big boost from the National Park Service. And the Park Service wouldn't have been interested in Hubbington's if it wasn't on busy Route 1. Part of the criteria, it has to be a building that has some identity to the area, which it did. But one of the most important things is that, is it easy for the public to see? And for this, it's unusual because it's on Route 1. Using the Park Service tax credit and additional help from the state and town, Peter Rhodes embarked on a massive restoration of this local landmark built in the late 1800s. The result, a showroom that is truly a showpiece. We sell nice American furniture, but furniture stores are everywhere. I think people like to look around and see the history. There is something very appealing about it being in this environment. Yep, yeah. Well, the dirt does fall through the floor, which makes it difficult on the furniture, but... Uh... Rhodes was actually a tough sell at first. What were your first impression? You come upon this barn, you walk in, and... Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when Rhodes first walked into the barn, it was Drake Farm Books, a huge used bookstore filled with cats. He was handed a can of flea spray. And I said, if it bothered you, you should spray your legs before you... Walk around, yeah. The fire chief and building inspector both had some advice for Rhodes. It would be better off if you tore down the building and made it a metal building. But Rhodes went ahead anyway. And today, the old Drake barn is on the National Register of Historic Places and has won a preservation award and been profiled in a book. If you had not bought it when you did, do you think this would still be standing? I think there's a good chance it would be torn down. Coincidentally, just a half mile down the road, another barn reborn. When we first opened the brewery, we really wanted to be on a farm because our beers feature local ingredients, and um, but we couldn't quite make that leap. Instead, Annette Lee and Nicole Carrier launched their throwback brewery in an industrial park, but they couldn't shake the idea of moving to a farm. I was thinking, you know, majestic, tranquil, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, yeah. where, no, where no one's gonna find us. And then here we are, we found it like right across the street. Hobbs Farm was a Northampton landmark, a gentleman sheep farm right on Route 1. It still had all the leftover of the sheep living there, the bedding, everything else. All I could see was like this beautiful structure. You had and, to have vision, yeah, let's just put it for that sure. way. The move to Hobbs Farm has allowed Throwback Brewery to broaden its horizons. There is a kitchen that puts out an array of lively dishes, many of the ingredients grown right on the farm's five acres. And of course, there is more room for the award-winning brewery itself. At its inception, one of only two women-owned breweries in the country. We're still the only 100% women-owned brewery in New Hampshire, but it's becoming, thankfully, more common to have women brewing yeah. beer. God, God knows we all like to enjoy beer. Yeah, so. <laughs> Perhaps as important as the farm fresh beer and food, Throwback Brewery has worked hard to create a comfortable community vibe, and it all starts with the barn. Does the barn itself become part of the identity here? It's definitely part of our identity. I love that it fits who we are so well. It's like the place that we were meant to be. But I almost even more love how people respond to it because I think there's something about being in a barn that is relaxing and comforting and people tend to, you know, and just chill out. And that could be the beer, but it's definitely enhanced by the barn. 
And what a beautiful barn that is. So brewing beer isn't Nicole Carrier's only passion. She also has a love for sausage making and Throwback Brewery sells her Lady Sausage brand charcuterie. Later this week, Throwback is releasing a special brew for Pride Month called Love for All that is sourced with plum, sumac and butterfly pea flower tea.